Hey there, everyone. It's Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. I am very excited to introduce to you my guest for today. She is TNA Wrestling's very own Zaya Brookside. Hey, nice to have you on the channel. Hey, thank you for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to talk to you because, first of all, I always love chatting, uh, you know, with the female wrestlers because I always just like love to get to know who you guys are, who you guys are, like just not like in the ring, but like even outside the ring. And let me tell you, like you and I got to chat for a little bit off off air and I just really love your personality. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're like, thanks. Like, how, do, what, how do I answer that kind of a compliment? Yeah, I'm like, I'm not used to compliments, but thank you. <laughs> I know. I feel like there's never a right way to take a compliment because if you're like, yes, that's that's exactly what I am. People are going to be like, hmm, you know? But, yeah, but then if you don't accept it, then you get more heat. So <laughs> there you go. You're like, how do I answer this? But no, seriously, Zaya, I'm really excited to have you on. So I want to get right to like the bottom of it. I want to start things off with talking about your journey uh, to TNA wrestling, because, you know, obviously you went through NXT UK first and you were very, very young. You were there for a couple of years. You know, your father's also in wrestling, still works in wrestling. Um, talk to us about your start in pro wrestling, how this all began for you when you decided to pursue it what inspired it and how that went wow it was my dad laughs at this story every time so he I never wanted to be a wrestler I wanted to be a vet so I was in school doing everything that you're meant to do I was taking my triple science I was studying hard and then basically as a child I would get picked up from school get put in the back of the car Here's a change of clothes, and we drive straight to a venue. That was the first 12 years of my life, every day. And we'd get back at 1, 2 a.m., get up for school at 7, go to school, get picked up, go to another town. And that was every day of my childhood. So I never wanted to be a wrestler until he moved to America and he stopped wrestling. And that's when I was like, hang on a minute. I missed this. Like I felt like there was a piece of me missing because I wasn't going to all these shows all the time. And that's when I realized I wanted to be a wrestler. So I start calling him like, hey, daddy, I want to be a wrestler. And he's like, no, go to school, be a vet. That's what you wanted to do. Go do it. And I'm like, nah. So this guy, Darren Thunder Walsh, who had been wrestling with my dad for like 20 years, he took over my dad's school. So I go in and I'm like, Uncle Darren, my dad said I could train. He didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And I start training. I trained for a year and then I started wrestling. And my dad, that was May 2015, I made my debut. I was 16 years old and my dad didn't watch me wrestle at all. He's had no say until the May Young Classic 2018. So I had been wrestling for three years before my dad had even seen a match. <laughs> so at what point did he actually find out, though, that you were training? Like, when did he actually find out? So I found out um, literally a couple of years ago, <laughs> very late to the party, that Darren had called my dad and said, hey, she wants to train. Do you mind if I train her? And he said, no. Like, I would prefer you to do it than for her to go somewhere else and get hurt or whatever. So he did approve or at least give permission to Darren, but it wasn't something he ever wanted me to do. And our wrestling journeys have always been, I like to explain it like a train track. They don't cross. We're very parallel. Like, I stick to what I'm doing and he sticks to what he's doing. And that's kind of just how it always worked for us. <laughs> Oh, my God. Like, there's a lot that I need to get out here because, first of all, like, good for you for sticking to your guns and being like, this is what I want to do. Because I feel like when you're a young kid and your parent says no, because we listen to our parents, you could have easily been like, you know what? He knows best. He's in the business. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I shouldn't do this. I was kind of more the opposite. Like, the more he said no, the more I wanted to do it. <laughs> like, I love that, funny. though. Yeah. That's why so, it was for me. <laughs> so here's the thing, though. You said that, you know, for the first couple of years, he didn't watch you until the May Young Classic. Why didn't he specifically watch you? So I think a part of it was probably because it's his little girl. Um, it's actually not a question that I've ever asked him. 
Um, and the May Young Classic, he only watched it because he was told to go and stand in the crowd. He was at work and his boss yeah, told yeah. him to go stand there. So that's what he had to do. Um, but the biggest part for the both of us is I'm a second generation wrestler. I am always going to get told she's only here because of her dad or she's only there because of her dad. And the one thing that him and I can do is look at each other and look at ourselves in the mirror and say it's not true. So that was the biggest thing for us is it doesn't matter what everyone else says if we both know and believe that I have done it on my own. Yes, I use the name. Yes, I stole the finisher. <laughs> But that's just the part of the British that I bought with me. I love that you said that because I think at the end of the day, when you know your own truth, like that's all that matters. And even if other people are saying, oh, she's just here because of her father, you and like sometimes I'm sure that'll probably get to you because you're human and things get to you sometimes. Yeah. But when you know your truth, the truth, you're able to be like, ah, whatever. He's just talking. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to prove my worth. Yes. So, you know, with that being said, though, like now that your dad has seen you, uh, what has he like, has he given you any advice, any like tips, anything like that? Yeah, he has. He, um, I mean, the biggest tips that he gives me is like life tips. So if, like you said, I have had those comments, especially when I first came into wrestling. I mean, I started when I was 16. I got signed when I was 19. That's very young. And there are older girls that maybe feel threatened or maybe don't like that I was there. Whatever it was, comments were made. So the biggest thing that he's ever done is just be there for me in those moments and keep me motivated and keep going. That's definitely been the biggest thing. In terms of wrestling, like if my match is on, for example, with TNA now, I live on a golf course and we have a country club. Every Thursday, there's like 15 people that live here that go to the country club and watch TNA wrestling <laughs> on the screen and they switch off the golf <laughs> and everyone just tunes in and watches my match. And it's the biggest supportive group I've ever experienced in my life. And he'll make little comments. He'll be like, why are you doing that? Stop fixing your hair. Leave your hair alone. You're in a fight. Like <laughs> I mean, he's right, honestly. I know we yeah. as girls, like, but it's like, yes. if it's in your face, you're obviously going to want to do this or, like, you know, hey. I can't see. <laughs> you're like, I got to move my hair, of course. But no, like, I think that's really, really sweet, though, that you have this community of people that care to watch you. Yes, it, it really is amazing. Like I said, I've been wrestling for almost nine years this year. And where I am at now with TNA Wrestling, everyone in the locker room, all of the bosses, Gail Kim, Tommy Dreamer, like everyone is so supportive and they have so much belief in you and they give you so many opportunities. This, I feel, is the best position I've ever been in. Yeah, so let's talk about that because, you know, you were talking about having been in NXT UK at such a young age. Talk to us about how that experience helped prepare you for all of a sudden you're in TNA and then like the first match you're in is an ultimate freaking X match and you're like, that's crazy. Like, let's talk about how that helped you get ready for this. Well, I mean, NXT UK taught me how to work cameras. They taught me everything in the ring from technical wrestling to telling stories to facial expressions and expressing yourself with your entire body, looking for the cameras, working with the fans. Like that opportunity for four years is what gave me the confidence for my first match with TNA to be on a live pay-per-view with, what was it, another five women in the match. <laughs> like there was a lot going on. And I'm terrified of heights. So for a first match for me, that was pretty scary, like thrown straight in the deep end. Yes, I can imagine because it's like it requires so much of you. Uh, and especially you're saying out here, like you're afraid of heights, like, damn, you know, that's kind of like, you know, you really got to test yourself, put yourself to the limit. But it was right after that, though, that you signed your contract with TNA Wrestling. Um, were you expecting them to offer you a contract? Um, I don't know if it expecting is maybe the word, but I was hoping for it. So I, I moved out here in July last year and I've been in talks with Gail literally since I moved. I was like, I really want to come to TNA. Like if there's an opportunity for me there. And then 
they give me that opportunity at the ultimate X match, hard to kill. And then straight away they're like, yeah, we want you here. And I was like, okay. It's, that's really cool because it's like you did the job, you impressed people, we liked you enough to keep you around and help you continue on this journey. And here's the thing, like March 8th, the sacrifice, you're in a pretty big match. You're in a triple threat yourself versus Tasha Steeles versus the champion Jordan Grace for the Knockouts Championship. Uh, talk to us about how you're feeling heading into a match of that caliber. And you've only had like, what, like four or five matches with TNA and like you're in this big matchup? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So my first was the Ultimate X match. Then I have a singles against Tasha, which I win. Then we have a rematch, which she cheats to win. And then our last match, I guess we both got hurried away with how much we now hate each other. <laughs> and we both get counted out. So I've had four matches with this company, three singles and a crazy match that will forever feel like it was a dream to me. Um, but now getting given an opportunity to not only take on a former champion, but to actually step in the ring with Jordan Grace, who has given everyone so much opportunity in the last few months, at least the last few months. Like she's the face of the company. She's strong. She has a lot behind her. And now I get to step in a ring with her on my first pay-per-view with this company like actually signed and i'm like it's just it's very overwhelming it's a dream come true and i'm just so grateful that they believe in me and they trust me to have this opportunity Dude, that's a really cool opportunity. I'm excited for you and to be able to, like, I love triple threat matches, by the way. They're some of my favorites because uh, I feel like you can do, like, so much fun stuff in there. Uh, and I'm sure, obviously, you know way more than I do as an actual wrestler. So uh, I'm looking forward to that match. And I'm looking forward to just seeing, like, you continue to grow in TNA, especially because, like, we know they treat the women well. You're going to get your time. You're going to go out there. You're going to have your matches. And you're just going to grow so much, uh, you know, during your time with TNA. Um, so Zaya, because you are so young, you're 25, correct? Yes. Yeah, so you're 25 years old. When you think about what you want the next like five years of your career to look like, like what's the ideal? What's the vision? What's the dream that you want to make sure that like you accomplish? I want to be a champion. Like I've had a lot of opportunities that I'm very grateful for. I've wrestled in a lot of countries against a lot of different people but I've never been put at the top or even actually given the opportunity to get there. This is my first opportunity that I've ever been given to at least try and get a hold of that title. And that's what I'm going to do this weekend. I'm not going to let this opportunity just like slip out of my hands. And that's another reason I'm so glad it's a triple threat because it's a lot harder to cheat if you've got two people. So I'm not even afraid of Tasha Steele's going into this match because I know if she tries to cheat, Jordan's going to be right there. Like, mm -mm. <laughs> that's her title. She's not going to let it slip away. So that's to be a champion. And another dream of mine was to be on a pay-per-view poster. And I just did that. I don't know if you saw it. I so. saw that. I did see that. Yes. I saw, I saw you had a, like a lot of things going on. Like this is your first oh. time, I believe, in Canada, right? Yes. Wrestling in Canada. It's my first pay-per-view and a title match signed with the company. It's my first time in Canada and it's my first time on the poster. Oh my God. I'm so excited for yeah. you. Like, what the heck? That is so awesome. Like to see that you're like, that's me. Yeah, I was like, oh my God. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> no, you should be like, you should appreciate each and every single moment because they always say, right. It's about the journey, not the destination. It really is. And I feel like that's something that I've definitely learned in the last in the last two years especially like i feel like i've definitely matured and grown a lot more and i've been more self-reflecting and just being able to enjoy every day like yes. not so much worrying like i love these questions of five years time because i think everyone should have goals but i don't worry so much now whereas before i'd be like oh my god i need to do this 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 now i'm just like oh my god i get to do this today that's crazy like I just kind of soak up the moments more. 
Yeah, I think that's the most important part because when you look back when you're like, you know, 60, 70, 80 years old, right? You're going to be like, oh my God, I did that. Like, I know I yeah. enjoyed those moments. I remember them. Uh, I think that really is the important part. So, Zaya, we have a few minutes left. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into our lightning round portion. And you can answer these however you want. I'm going to ask you 10 random questions and you answer them however you please. It's basically just so your fans get to know you a little bit more. So, let's get to it. Here we go. Uh, question number one. Out Outside of wrestling, what are you a big fan of? Now golf. <laughs> are you really? <laughs> That's every, cool. week, every weekend that I have off, I play golf. And are I you any it. good? I'm not bad. Okay, like, that's great. For someone that just started out, like I hit the ball, you know? Yeah. It might not always go where it's meant to go. <laughs> I was going to say, it looks so hard. I'm like, even when I go to like, just like those regular places where you can play golf, like I'm like, oh, this is yeah. impossible. <laughs> oh, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, question number two, have you ever gotten starstruck? Yes. Who, who uh, was it? When I met state champs, that was like a big like thing for me when I met them personally. Um, I love music. I love like that whole scene. So for me, it was always more the music industry that I got starstruck at more than the rest of the industry. And I think that's just because I was raised in it. So everyone was like normal people yeah. to me in wrestling. So to be honest, any kind of musician, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> You're like, that's you. <laughs> yeah, <you're> so cool. <laughs> Question number three, what's one item in your refrigerator that must always be refilled? Oh, you got it there with you. What is it? Coconut milk or coconut water? It's coconut water. This is my mm. favorite one. It's chocolate. And it's awesome. This is something that is always in our fridge, completely stocked up. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Your go-to drink. I love that. Yeah. Uh, question number four. Who do you look up to the most? Oh, probably Natalia. Okay, nice. Yes. She brings in a lot of that technical style. And I mean, how long she's been wrestling is also a huge factor. All of the Guinness World Records that she has, like, and she's just the nicest person I've ever met. Have to. you gotten the opportunity to train with her at all? Yeah. Nice. And how was that, that? It was awesome. She's incredible. That's so cool. I love it because she's just got so much respect, like from everybody, because she really has been in the game. And like you mentioned, the Guinness World Records and everything she's been able to accomplish has been really cool. She's doing so much for women's wrestling, has done so much for women's wrestling. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I think the biggest reason she gets respect is because no matter who you are, she gives you respect. She's yes. so humble. Like she's honestly the nicest person. It doesn't matter where you are, who who you are or what you're from. Like she treats you the same as everyone else. And I think that's just amazing. I love that. Question number five. Um, what word would your friends use to describe you? Uh, probably a bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a good word, man. That's a good word. Yeah. <laughs> uh, question number six. Do you have any pre or post fight uh, rituals? I pray before every match. I love that. Twice? Twice. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's so cool though. Cause you're yeah. like, what's not enough? It's gotta be two. <laughs> yeah. I pray like a couple of minutes before, and then I do like a quick mini prayer when my music starts playing. Oh, I love that. I really do. It's like, it provides some comfort, right? Yep. Yeah. And I pray for both me and whoever I'm wrestling. Just yes. the and everything. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, question number seven, who has been your favorite opponent to date? Oh, Io Shirai. Ooh, I can imagine. That must have been really cool for you. That was very cool. <laughs> Hell yeah. Question number eight. If you weren't a wrestler, oh, actually, we, we already know this one, but I'll still ask you. If you weren't a wrestler, what would you be doing for a living? Well, I don't know if I would be a vet because I also wanted to be a psychiatrist. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's the backup I, one. It would be, yeah, one or the other. That's so cool, though, because it's like there's such different interests from pro wrestling, like two totally different lives, three totally different lives. Yeah, and they include a lot of time to get there, too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All of them. Yes. Uh, question number nine. Do you have any secret talents? I can flare my nostrils. <laughs> oh, OK. How do you do? What do you mean by flare your nostrils? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's I actually can't really wait. cool. I can't wait to see the concentration on that. And my husband's always <laughs> like, how do you do that? And I'm like, well, anytime you yawn, your nostrils flare. Yeah, no, I never noticed. I never thought I never noticed that yeah, actually. But I can't wink, so <laughs> you're like, oh, you, you can't have it all. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't wink and I can't close this eye at all. So <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like just I, to do the oh, you have to do like both or not both or yeah. none at all. Yeah, I could. I, yeah, I can blink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right, question number ten, last one. What was the last TV show or movie that you watched? Uh, I just started watching Full House. Oh, wait, for the first time ever? Yep, for the first time ever. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I grew up with Full House. So, yeah. I just finished Switched at Birth, which I'd watched before. I like that one, too. Um, I love the signing in it. Like, I really want to learn ASL. Yes. And then I just started watching Full House. Because I seen like, and I was like, I need to know, like, because it's a classic, right? It's a classic American. Yeah. So I just started watching that. (laughs) And I also watch Fuller House. I think you'll enjoy Fuller House as well. That's the new one, right? Yeah, that's the new one. So Full House is the one you're watching, the OG, and then Fuller House is the new one. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to watch that next. <laughs> Yay. Okay. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. All righty. Um, Zai, I want to thank you so much for hopping on, for doing this interview. You were so much fun. It was so nice to get to know you. Before we go, uh, tell the people where they can watch TNA, where they can follow you on social media. So you can follow me at Zaya Brookside on anything and everything. And you can watch TNA on Access TV every Thursday at 8 p.m. Or you can watch on the TNA Plus app or on YouTube. And if you are overseas in the UK, you can watch it on D-A-Z-N. I don't know how to say that, but that's where you can watch it. Or you can watch it on YouTube. So make sure you tune in. Wonderful. I'm going to post all of the links to that as always in the description box below. Thank you to Zaya for tuning in and what they for doing the interview. And thank you for the fans and everybody who tuned in to the show. I appreciate you guys as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye, everyone.